Welcome back, brothers and sisters. I am Braden. This is Langley Outdoors Academy, the place where we not only talk about what's going on in the gun world, but also how we're going to fix it together. And the content that we're going to look at today is a new lawsuit that is being dropped against Call of Duty, Facebook, Instagram, and Daniel Defense by the families of the Uvalde victims. And on top of that, it just so happens to show some very familiar names and faces that you are never going to believe when there's millions upon millions of dollars, how the same people keep showing up. Everything is going to be linked in the description box below. Let me hear you in the comments field. And this is going to be a very big story. So make sure you send this one out because this right here is the fight we're in every single day. Make sure you hit that like button, subscribe to the channel, and turn the notification bell on if you want to help fight these things back and pass the blessings of the Second Amendment along to the next generation. And thank you for that consideration. And all of this content is made possible by a giveaway from Vanish Holsters for a truck. You need to check it out. It's linked right down there in the description box. Say a quick word, and then we're going to hit this. Today, I want to tell you about the biggest giveaway I've ever had on my channel. This is from Vanish Holsters. They are giving one of you this $80,000 custom Rocky Ridge Silverado for free to one lucky American who buys one of their gun magnets or t-shirts through June 3rd. And all you have to do to get a shot at that truck is get one of these bad boys, the storage magnet from Vanish Holsters. You are talking about rare earth uh, magnets that will hold up to 45 pounds across any terrain once it's mounted in your vehicle. It can not only hold the gun itself, also has room for one magazine, and on top of that, it will not scratch at all your firearm. Now to get entries for this truck, make sure you check this out at the link in the description box below. Vanish is looking to hook you up. This is something where you get a massive discount just for clicking right down there and you get the entries as well. Thank you so much to them and check it out. All right, beautiful people, listen. It's no secret that the left is on a quest to get gun control through the legal system. Lawfare is being employed in full force, all right? But listen to this. Some of the things I'm about to show you, I haven't seen anywhere else in the gun space. Let me know what you think. I land this plane. Let's get it. Publisher of Call of Duty, maker of the AR-15 style rifle, that's Daniel Defense, and Meta named in wrongful death lawsuits by families of the Uvalde tra tragedy. Now, this broke this past um, last end of the week, all right? Understand what they're doing. They are suing a Facebook and Meta Instagram apparatus, which has protections from getting um, from the actions of their users. They are suing a gun manufacturer, which has the Protection of Lawful Commerce and Arms Act, and they are they are pursuing suing Call of Duty, of which the entire left has told us is a preposterous idea. Who's doing it, you ask? I almost heard you through the camera. One second, let me show you this, then I'll tell you. Three companies are facing wrongful death lawsuits in the Uvalde school shooting of 2022, according to the complaints filed in California and Texas. The, su the suits, which accuse the companies of grooming, which I'm pretty sure grooming, as used in this article, was verboten a little while ago in a different topic, but now that it's being used for gun control, it's all the rage. The Robb Elementary School shooter, after 19 families of students and teachers killed at the school, announced on Wednesday they settled a lawsuit with the city for $2 million. So they settled for $2 million. Then two days later, they drop another lawsuit against Meta, Call of Duty, and Daniel Defense. Okay. Um, I'm just going to keep on going. And this is where you know there's a rat. Check this out who's doing it. The families are represented by Koskoff, Koskoff & Bider, the law firm that won a $73 million settlement from gun manufacturer Remington in the fallout of Sandy Hook. Shocker among shocks. The same law firm that got the $73 million insurance um, lawsuit settlement from the insurance company of Remington, not Remington, insurance company, is now involved in suing these companies that have billion-dollar budgets it's almost like they figured out a business model and they're doing it again. So weird how the, the strings and the same players are always involved. I'm still looking for how Everytown Law is involved. I haven't found it yet, so I can't say they are. But my radar is going off. I'm going to find it if it's there. But that's why we have an entire infrastructure that we are building. But let's continue and listen to the statement on how it's their fault. In a statement, Josh Koskoff, obviously one of the partners, co partner at Koskoff, Koskoff and Beater, and an attorney for the family said, quote, there is a direct line between the conduct of these companies and the Uvalde shooting. Just 23 minutes after midnight on his 18th birthday, the Uvalde shooter bought an AR-15 made by a company with a market share of less than 1%, talking about Daniel Defense. Why? 
because well before he was old enough to even purchase it, he was targeted and cultivated online by Instagram and Activision, which is Call of Duty, and Daniel Defense. This three-headed monster knowingly exposed him to the weapon, conditioned him to see it as a tool to solve his problems, and trained him to use it. They're saying Call of Duty is liable because they trained him how to use a firearm in the real world. Again, the exact same side of the political spectrum that says it's preposterous to think that Call of Duty would have anything to do with murder and it's all the gun's fault. Same aisle, same people, but this is different because now it's suing some three of the largest companies in the space of sharing information and manufacturing, even though it's just 1% market share. Do you see how silly and flimsy this is? But that doesn't matter because the last time they did something silly and flimsy, the, Daniel, the um, Remington lawsuit, they settled for $73 million. They got theirs, and wouldn't you know it, they're back again. Shocker among shocks, I'm just saying. Let's continue. The lawsuits claim that Meta and Activision are, quote, chewing up alienated teenage boys and spitting out mass shooters, and that Instagram's poor oversight of its platform gives gun manufacturers an unsupervised channel to speak directly to minors. False lie. Meta does not allow gun makers to directly purchase ads promoting their weapons, but, but does give them the ability to create and post on their own Facebook and Instagram accounts. That's the crime. Someone has to actively seek out something. It's, so it's no longer marketing now. Now it's Facebook and Instagram's fault for even allowing it to be hosted. Do you see what they're doing? Well, yeah, sure, you guys got rid of the ad capabilities, which we were complaining about. And then you got rid of the ability to have anything shared, which we were complaining about. But now the fact that you merely exist, oh, you, that can't be either. Do you see how this works? Anyway, let's continue. I'm just going to keep on rolling because this is so fascinating, this part. Remember that PLCAA thing I was talking about? Here's where it comes in for Meta and Facebook. Online platforms like Instagram and Facebook, also owned by Meta, similar, similarly have federal immunity that in most cases prevents companies from being sued for actions committed by users. Okay, so you're suing a gun manufacturer who has protections from the PLCAA from the actions of their users, which are criminal. Then you're suing Instagram and Facebook, which again, have and Activision, to be honest, all, all of which have protections against the actions of their users. So you're guaranteed loss out the gate, but for some reason you're pursuing this lawsuit right after you won one in Texas for $2 million. Isn't that weird? It's almost like they're expecting a settlement instead of actually winning the case, just like Everytown Law is doing with the Glock manufacturing lawsuits in uh, Chicago and New York. All of this is tied together, guys. This right here, this one's going to be a big story. We're going to see a lot more and a lot more details going to come out, but make sure you are subscribed. Let me know what you think in the comments field, and I will see you on the next one. I'm Braden. See you later.